Jesus! <laughs> Holy smokes, man. This is so much funny. Uh, I don't know if I can record at the same time. Anyways, I will probably upload this as a video. Um, hope you guys can hear me well and clear. Uh, this is awesome. I have to say this is awesome. Let's see if someone joins the conversation because I'm really pumped up with this stuff. Um, I was going about to have a lunch, you know, eat something anyways. And, I, you know, YouTube just uh, sent me out this video on the feed, you know, recommended. I was like, what is this shit? <laughs> Let me take a look. And I was really surprised how stupid someone can be and you know unprofessional is probably the best in the, the best word to use on this case because you know you can't you, if you don't understand shit about what you are doing it doesn't really make sense to to speak about it it, it you know it makes sense uh, or if you want to at least understand um, or speak about it you have you know to go and check your background See how well thing, what you know and what you shall know, how, how you shall do everything. And it's pretty crazy to see a channel like this. And The Verge has 2.1 uh, million uh, subscribers. So they kind of influence um, some a lot of people. I don't know what type of content they have. So let me just check it out. But it's really stupid. Even though they don't have this type of content, that I believe they don't, because it doesn't make sense to have, you know, uh, <laughs> shit like this happening. But, I mean, yeah, I'll have a lot of stuff about uh, tech, I mean, phones and stuff like that. So, yeah. But even though it's a little, you know, you, you can understand a lot of stuff about, uh, you know, uh, cell phones, smartphones, whatever. And you still don't understand shit about computers, so it makes sense uh, in a way. But, you know, I saw, I have to say, I saw a group on Facebook, and shout out to Hardware Tips from Portugal. Uh, someone posted a photo, of, uh, you know, about this video, and I was like, well, you know, a random photo with all the, that's the, the thumbnail photo, by the way. You know, all the cables, a big messed up uh, thing. Um, and I was like, well, Someone just made a big mistake posting this on the web and, you know, just, or maybe it was on purpose. I, I don't really know, but it was funny to see that photo, but I didn't really care about it. And today YouTube kind of recommends me uh, a video, uh, a reaction about this video that we want to see. And I was like, what is this shit, man? It doesn't make sense. And... I didn't finish up the, the, that reaction because I feel like I have to do the same. We have to speak for the, the, the many people we can, so you guys can understand this is really bad. It's this is it's such a big fail. I have to I have to do. I have to say. Anyways, let's see the video, uh, and you know react to the video. Uh, it's my first time doing a reaction, and I'm already pumped up because this is so stupid, man. <laughs> This is really funny because the guy makes a lot of messes, uh, a lot of mess. So let's just ago, see it. TC or managing editor built a gaming desktop, but it's kind of out of date and it's definitely not going to hold up for Battlefield 5. So let's build a new one. I'm already smiling. This is really funny. <laughs> you can build a gaming desktop for around a thousand dollars, but I want to go all out, so I spent around two thousand. PC like this is going to be able to play most games at ultra settings. So what do you need to build a desktop? Well, of course, first you need a table. Preferably not metal. If it's going to be metal, have an anti-static working surface layered on top of it, a thermal paste applicator, an Allen wrench, some tweezers to tie up the wires, a Swiss Army knife, which hopefully has a Phillips head screwdriver in it, yeah. and last but not least, an anti-static bracelet, which bit, is to protect uh, you yeah. and the parts. Is, these are the parts you're going to need. But more importantly, before we get there, we need to understand what these parts are doing. These are the and last but not least, an anti-static bracelet, which is to protect you and the parts. These are the parts you're going to need. But more importantly, before we get there, no we need to understand what these parts are doing. The only thing I have to say is a screwdriver. It's, it's, it's really bad. <laughs> I mean, you couldn't use... <laughs> what is the point? A canivet? It's how you, you spell it? I don't know, but... It doesn't really make sense. Uh... <laughs> 
Holy smokes. Yeah. And, and how they okay interact with you. Don't have to better any, understand the parts that make up a desktop, let's try to understand okay them individually. The processor it is like the computer's brain, a base of calculations that control everything the computer does. The motherboard is like the foundation, serving as a main structure for all other parts to be added to. It also allows the other parts to communicate with one another, which also makes it kind of like a nervous system. Graphics cards are responsible for rendering and processing visuals into what you see on screen. Our PC's power supply is, of course, channeling electricity, in that it adjusts and provides the right amount of energy to keep it running. Last but not least, RAM, or random access memory, and your hard drive are good examples of short-term and long-term memory, respectively. If you want to better understand what kind of computer to build, then first figure out what you want to use it for. A gamer might care more about a graphics card than, say, a video editor who might want extra RAM to assist with editing large files. If you're building a budget build for video streaming, say, under $1,000, you want to focus on parts, like a Core i5 or Core i3 processor, that require less energy. They'll be less powerful, but then you'll be able to scale back okay I didn't get it let me just go back again if you're building a budget build for video streaming say okay, under a thousand dollars you want to focus okay. on parts like a core i5 or core i3 processor that require less energy they'll be less powerful but then you'll be able to scale back the cost of several other parts and if you need help choosing the right parts for your build there are sites like pcpartpicker.com that help show presets for which parts fit together which sort of part conflicts you might have, and where to find deals on new parts. We have a lot of boxes. For now, I have to say it's pretty general on what he says, so it's okay for someone to understand a little about uh, specs, so about PC world, but I guess a lot of things is really general meaning, so not, not really anything it is, to And a lot out. of PC parts, so it's best you unbox them, isolate the parts that you really need, place items into the case, and make sure that they all fit, and then start working. And now we're really going to start building by adding the motherboard in. Some notes about installing motherboards, they're really delicate, you should be really careful with them. And screw in with confidence, but also don't screw in too hard, otherwise you could crack the board. I chose Asus's Z370 motherboard for two main reasons. One, it has built-in Wi-Fi and Bluetooth, and also it has support for NVMe SSDs, meaning you can get really fast SSDs that are really easy to install. Pay close attention to the brace that goes at the back of the computer. You always have to make sure that you really hammer it in because there's no screw. Hammer it really just has to go outside of the case and clasp onto the frame. And this is very important because... What is that about the motherboard? It's kind of true. You don't, You have to... Have a little careful, careful uh, dealing with it because if you, you know, a lot of transistor and stuff underneath that, sometimes the standoffs can break. So it's kind of important to have, um, you know, to pay attention to what you are doing and be careful with that so we don't break anything. But so far, so good. Why is you can't align the motherboard correctly with the holes? We're just going to start installing all eight screws. The, the screwdriver just kills So next we're going to install the RAM on the motherboard. I chose Corsair's 16GB Vengeance LED RAM for two main reasons. One, it has LEDs and we do like lights in our gaming. <laughs> it has LEDs. That's a really pointless. You know, if you are building something, um, if you want some, you know, customization to your setup, it's kind of important to have lights, of course, but it's not the main reason. And if you want to save some money, don't go for RGB stuff or light up stuff. Even though a lot of RAMs um, or a lot of PC parts tr will start to get to the lightning thing or more, more customizable or more enjoyable to watch. Mostly because it's what attracts you to buy them. But I don't know. It's okay. He went for the lights because he likes the, I, the, the lights. But I... Giving you my example, I have a, a custom desk and I have a lot of lighting, but I don't, I, I'm not, you know, uh, constantly looking at the inside of my computer. So when I'm gaming, it doesn't really make uh, sense. But if you want to have a custom build, it's okay to go for that. But you, if you want to save some bucks, don't, don't, don't go for, for, for that kind of stuff. Desktops. Secondly. Uh, it's pretty fast RAM. It's 2,666 megahertz, I believe. So, so this is another thing. It's DDR4. It's uh, DDR4. It's not that fast. You have faster memory. Uh, so 
I guess, if you want to buy um, RAM, always compare to your, what your motherboard can do. Uh, besides the overclock thing, if you don't are if you if you aren't really um, okay or into the overclock world, it doesn't make sense uh, to buy overclock the RAM or having a motherboard that can have a lot of overclock RAM or whatever. So it's another thing that maybe can save you some money if you are not into it. It doesn't make sense to buy to buy it. Most of us or most of the user don't even overclock, so because most probably after two three years four mostly you are gonna rebuy um you know new parts uh, because you know tech tech is always uh, getting updates so it's normal that you kind of uh, are moving for other platforms so sometimes if you are not really a overclock user it doesn't really make sense to to, to buy it so it's just um, a tip don't buy um, stuff that you will not use uh, so you can save some money for other stuff. It's pretty easy. It's pretty fast, and this motherboard supports that speed, which is most important. Yeah. Open yes. the slots first, and just aligning the stick with the middle of the strip, not with the end, and just lining that up with the logo. So once you hear that solid clasp, and you don't see the gold connectors on the side anymore, that's when you know the RAM is in. Step three, we're going to install the hard drive, or in this case, the NVMe SSD. I chose this format of solid state drive so that I could input it into the motherboard without having to worry about extra wires or putting it in a separate part of the case and just getting really messy. This is from Kingston and it's 480 gigabytes, so it's not a lot, but you can always upgrade this and swap it out and it's only held down by one screw and the latch. So it's really simple and really straightforward. This is something I want to buy for me for myself. Uh, NVMe are always it's something really cool. It's really fast, and can you know it's always good to have uh, fast storage, and in games loads all all that stuff. It's really cool to have this. So if you have money to buy one and the possibility to place in your motherboard, it's definitely something you should go. You have uh, different types, different speeds. You know standard speeds like uh, standard SSD. But the ones that really um, kind of, you know, um, make the big difference, it's when you jump to the 1000 megabits per second. So something, you, if you are looking to buy one and have the possibility to add it to your build, it's really something to go. Speed for gaming is important when it comes to a hard drive. You want files to write quickly and you want games to load quickly. Yeah. So that's why it's best if you use an SSD. Okay, so step four, we're going to install the graphics card. I chose PNY's GTX 1080, which is overclocked. And so it's a pretty easy installation. You're just gonna find the gold connectors and you're gonna line this bracket another, with the back end bracket. Another thing, uh, like the motherboard, you have, you have to have a little careful uh, dealing with graphics card that don't, doesn't have backplate. Once I get transistors, all the stuff that, you know, is soldered to the, to the, to the board can break if you don't do it properly, it sometimes, you know, when you're adding extra force, um, pushing the graph, the, the, the car to the, to the motherboard, you can really break something. So be careful with that. It's important to get rid of your PC case. Now, which lane you choose depends entirely on what other parts you're gonna put in the system. I'm just gonna pick the top one because the SSD is at the bottom and I don't wanna cover it. I just think it looks nice. Click okay. This 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 is a bit stupid. Uh, it's basically saying that it's placing the graphics card on the top uh, PCI uh, connector because it doesn't want it to cover up the N NVMe or SSD whatever um, on the bottom. Doesn't make sense. You always choose the the best um, or the fastest uh, connection for your graphics card, even though you can uh, you. You will probably not use all the bandwidths. It's always good to have that, so you don't have any uh, bottleneck. Or, you know, if you want to take all the performance you can have for your system to make a, a gaming si setup, it's better to have it on the right, on the fastest uh, connection. So it makes all the sense to place on the the first one because it's generally the fastest. Of course, if you don't have in, it's pretty tricky. I, I already saw people doing, you know, placing on the second one, uh, even though they are the same speeds, and that's okay. 
but you know go always for the the top one the first one it trends to be the the fastest and makes sense to you know if you want to have if you want to have all the performance you know go for the the fast one so don't really care about the aesthetics on that is a stupid justification to place it on the top one so you know it's obvious you want the fast performance you place it on the fast connection it's pretty obvious i i would say click down Take your remaining brackets and just put them in the spots that you haven't used. You don't have to screw these in, they get bolted down by the back end bracket. And your GPU is installed. Power supply time. I chose Corsair's 850 watt power supply because I need enough headroom for ray tracing GPUs when they come out and I don't want to have to upgrade it again. So all you have to do is take the brick and make sure that you align it with these little insulating pads so the power supply doesn't short circuit and come into contact with the rest of the system. So just take it in, slide it in nice and easy. Wait a minute. <laughs> what, 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 what the fuck? And Justice make sure that you align it with these little insulating pads so the power supply doesn't short circuit and come into contact what with- What the fuck? <laughs> He's saying that you have to- <laughs> It's pretty funny, indeed. So basically you have to place the, the power supply in top of that uh, rubbing pad so it doesn't get short uh, uh, as his short circuit. And make sure that you align it with these little insulating pads so the power supply doesn't short circuit and come in. <laughs> yeah, short circuit uh, with the the rest of the, 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 the case, the rest of the components. So <laughs> it's going... Is about to install it and you know uh, bolt it in the the case. So what the fuck is wrong with this guy? <laughs> this, is, this is pretty funny. I have to hear it. Brick, and make sure that you align it with these little insulating pads. So the part. This is not insulation pads. This is rubber pads that prevents your um, power supply to vibrate. You know it's good. You have a fan spinning. Uh, it. As different speeds depending on the wattage you are using so it makes sense to have rubbing pads so it can handle the vibration it doesn't have nothing uh, to do with the with the the short circuits or anything like that it doesn't make sense okay you are you are about to bolt you have to bolt your power supply to the case you don't have any rubber uh, bolts or anything that will it doesn't make sense Supply doesn't short circuit and come into contact with the rest of the system. So just take it in, slide it in nice and easy until you have a snug fit, and then shift it to the back and make sure it's right up against the frame. Wait a minute. Now, now you just take the required screws and you tighten. This is what I'm talking screw. about: is bolting the power supply into the case. Where is the rubbing pad? Oh my God! Don't turn that shit off. It's going to short circuit. <laughs> this is funny. <laughs> and another thing, where the, why the fuck is the fan on the on the inside? Holy smokes. This is this is stupid. I mean, as I said, I saw, I saw this I saw this image and uh, YouTube recommended me to saw to see the a reaction from it. That's why I'm reacting because this is really stupid. People have to know have to know, you know, some stuff he said are correct. Uh, okay. No, this is not entire loss. Even though the final result, it's a mess, and it's probably most what you you know. A lot of people probably have the, the computers like that. If you go to a big super, a supermarket and buy, you know, um, old uh, standard tower, they are probably like this because they kind of cut really, um, uh, I will say, cut corners to have uh, more profit from the from the computer. So they kind of have. Really low quality uh, stuff to it, so it's not that you when you open your case, something like that, uh, or like the final result, a lot of mess. You will see a lot of mess. But in this case, is making your, uh, um, you know, custom build, and he said some stuff right. But then you know, we saw the, um, we are seeing right now the, the 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 power supply. It's really stupid. Why is installing the the fan on the on the inside? It's a turn. It's it's crazy. Why is saying he's saying a lot of stuff that doesn't make sense and can, can you know uh, can
confuse people and that, that's what I'm trying to 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 say here. And <laughs> so next step we're going it's to install just, the CPU it's... cord. Oh In this case it's gonna go on the top end of the case and we're the just gonna have the me. hose <laughs> hang out for a little while until we install the processor, yeah. which is gonna come a little later. Always be sure to try to place it in the system first before you install it, because you can see it takes up- That's another thing I don't recommend. Um, first thing you have to do, you, you know, you have to remove all the panels on, of your um, case. Everything gotta be uh, removed. And then you have to, let me just change, yeah. And then you have to get your motherboard, place the CPU, even place the RAM, because it's more easy for you to, to do that with the, with the motherboard out than with the motherboard in. Mostly because you're probably going, if you have the motherboard in, you're gonna, you know, uh, going around with your case and you'll probably scratch it. It's, it's worse, trust me, it's worse. So every time you wanna, you wanna, you know, build a system, Go first for the motherboard and then it was motherboard, CPU, RAM. I think it's better and a lot of people do this and you know, it makes sense. A lot of space. But in this case, no pun intended, it fits in perfectly and we're gonna start screwing it in. And so there's nothing special about this screwing in process. They're just really long screws because the screw they go through right, the entire frame of the cooler so bad. and they take forever. So next up, cables. Every power supply is gonna come with a big bag of Velcro cables. It's kind of daunting at first, so you always have to find uh, the ones that are gonna fit. That's that's not true. You don't have all the power supplies uh, modular. They ha he have one, so he have a bag with cables, but In this case, you need to match have, uh, those you know, cables, cables with attached. the correct descriptions on the power supply. Next step is work. This is another thing. Um, there are people that prefer to connect all the cables that you will need and route them first before before placing even the motherboard. I'm okay with that. Uh, he's doing another way. I'm okay with this with this too. Uh, but sometimes it's really tricky to connect the cables. He has he have a lot of space to you know to connect the cables because the the power supply is in, a, in the other side of the case. So we remove the big panel. We have a lot of space. But sometimes. When the, the, the power supply is underneath a cover or something like that, it's really hard to, to connect the cable. So one thing I recommend you is that when you wanna, you know, place your, your power supply and if it's modular, connect all the cables first. And then you route them to the system. Because if you don't do that, it will be really tricky to connect, you know, with a lot of small space, you know, power supply, uh, cover, shrouds, whatever. Trying to be really, um, um, I'll say claustrophobic because I don't know anywhere to, to use it. So with a little amount of space to connect cables. So yeah, it's it's. I think it's better to connect the cables first, then apply the power supply if you don't have enough space like this guy has. Connecting the power supply to the motherboard with a 24 pin cable. We're just matching that cable from the motherboard, threading it through the back, and attaching the 24 pin header to the power supply so that we can have one of the connections complete. The next few additions will be for the GPU, for any specific ports that the case has, for any lighting that the case has, the CPU cooler, the anything else really. We're installing the CPU. Okay, the CPU cooler uh, is probably speaking about the fans, but it, it, if you have a, a, a all-in-one system, it always comes with the CPU pump, and you probably connect the CPU pump to the header on the um, on the motherboard, so you don't really have to connect it connect it to the to the power supply. So the heart real... of the computer or the brain, depending on how you look at it. So to do this, we're just going to remove the plastic covering that they put on the motherboard. We're just going to take this little plastic part out. We'll just toss that out of here. And now we have an exposed <laughs> CPU holder, or rather slot, on the motherboard. And we're gonna use the that's CPU applicator. That's what I, I was saying. Uh, yeah, let's see. So, if you didn't, you know, if it already placed the CPU on the socket, it didn't need it to be, you know, uh, flipping the case around and around, uh, probably scratching it, because it's it doesn't have it, it doesn't have any uh, soft surface or uh, I'll say even a mouse pad, a big mouse pad to to place the um, 
to place the case. So it's always important to, to do some stuff before you going into the case itself, you know, like the motherboard. If you place the CPU and you place the RAM, you don't need to turn your case so you don't you will not scratch it or something like that. I, I think it's, uh, as I'm saying, it's better uh, because you don't, you don't want to scratch even, it's a, 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 a white case. It's probably scratching it a lot uh, doing this way, so I mean, I'm gonna take this little plastic better, part you know, out. We'll just toss that out of here. And sense. now we have an exposed <laughs> CPU holder, or rather slot, on the motherboard. And we're gonna use the CPU applicator. This is a special yeah, part that not everyone may get, but this motherboard that we got from ASUS definitely does have. It's what this is doing to the socket, the CPU is. I don't know this type of, you know, bracket thing. I don't know this. Uh, I generally don't use this Locator. shit. This is a special little part that not everyone may get, but this motherboard that we got from ASUS definitely does have. It's called a CPU installation tool. It makes it really useful if you want to install a Core i7 Hexacore CPU. Yeah, we've got one and it's an <laughs> We have one, man. Generation chip Look at us, man. We have a lot of money, man. Ready to go. Hexacore and it supports power. overclocking. What the fuck? So what having this little installer does for you is it's basically a okay, brace is... that you can apply right to the CPU I don't know why and this. light it up with the triangles that you'll see on the bottom left corners. And this will make it easier for us to apply it to the motherboard and then apply thermal so paste. So I don't know why here on the back, and I wanna, I'm about to show you guys. Let me see if I can get it. What it is? He was doing. He, he was doing a lot of, you know, uh, force to the to the CPU. Uh, he probably didn't quite place that well. But anyway, make it easier for us to apply it to the motherboard and then apply thermal paste and then apply a CPU cooler on top. And we're just gonna carefully lean it down into the system and make sure that everything lines up. And wait a minute. Where is the fucking plastic thing? <laughs> What the fuck? Clasp down on it and we'll be good what? to go. On it and we'll be good to go. What? The, uh, what? So it recommends it to use the the, the mounting mechanism that Asus uh, that came with the motherboard and is not using it. I don't know how how I don't really know how how this thing works because you just open the socket. You know, the older, whatever, you place the CPU, you close it, and it's done. Most cases. If you have a Threadripper, you probably need to screw it out, whatever. But in overall, you just place it there. And is Rick man it, What? He's going all the way, almost a minute, explaining that this is a better thing. It, in the end, it doesn't use it. What the fuck? You know, it's... To mount a CPU, it's pretty easy. Right now, we don't have the pins on the CPU, so it's even easier. You just have to have a little careful when placing the the CPU on the socket because you can bend that uh, that pins that are on the motherboard. But in overall, it's really easy. You just grab the CPU, you know, whatever. Let's use the my RGB controller to do that. You just grab it on top. You have a small triangle. You just align with the triangle that is on the socket or on the motherboard. And you just place it there with some careful, of course, because you don't want to bend the pins. Then you just bring the holder to its position and you close. It's pretty simple. The thing is, it, it went. For, it made a minute in this video explaining that this is really important, and in the end, it doesn't use it. So whatever. Yeah, it's pretty easy. You have a triangle there. You have a triangle there. You just align everything. Magic! You close the wrench or whatever this shit is. So we're about to apply thermal paste to the CPU. <laughs> Every CPU cooler actually comes with a bit of thermal paste already neatly applied in a circle around Sound it. Gum, but one. it's usually not enough. It's good, essentially, PC building practice to have a little bit extra and layer it. <laughs> what the fuck? Wait a minute. What? what? This is so fucked up, man. I mean, so we're about to apply thermal paste to the CPU. To, he's basically saying that this is not enough. 
Oh, say, oh okay. So Corsair uh, sold this, uh, sold him um, an IO system with thermal paste in. But it's not enough. We have to play smart. That's how it works. Holy shit. Every CPU cooler actually comes with a bit of thermal paste already neatly applied in a circle around it. But it's usually not enough. It's good, essentially, PC building practice to have a little bit extra and layer it on. Look how it's doing it. This is wrong. Holy, that's why, I, that's why I, I'm reacting to this video because this is so stupid. And even, even if you don't know, uh, even, even if you know how to, you know, automate a, a computer, because a lot of folks do, uh, one better than, than others, that's normal. You, it's cool, it's good to see this type of things because you can detect some errors that are, you know, you don't need to place, first of all, if you buy a, um, a CPU cooler and if it comes with a thermal paste, you don't need to apply more. But what I recommend you to do is to clean the one that it, it is on, this, on the cooler and, you know, place, new one, uh, place a new one. Mostly because, you know, when let's 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 for example see you buy a new cooler you, you go to the to a shop you buy a new cooler uh, that was that was made you know back a year ago but it's still on the shelf you know temperatures change over the year uh, you know that's something that can you know damage the the thermal paste so it's quite decent to remove but you have to remove you know the one that comes in the CPU cooler and place new one not like this this is wrong you don't place thermal paste like this you know just going around this is stupid but you know it's a thing that you should do because if it's if the, your imagine your cooler was uh, um, made a year ago is on storage now it's on sales you know go oh always wanted to buy that cooler you go buy it but it was for a year on a storage uh, room without air condition, without air control, uh, um, whatever thing, doesn't matter. And temperatures can affect your thermal paste. So it's always good to remove it and place new one. Not like this. This guy is making Top of the CPU. This is the final portion is... You, you have a lot of, a lot of methods, methods to, to do this. You can just apply a straight line, uh, you know, top. Uh, or I'll say top to bottom, left to right, whatever. You can just pl uh, place a, li a little dot on the middle, but you don't really need to. to, to, to it, it is just because with the pressure of your cooler and the temperature, it will get you know uh, uniform. So this is not right. To add the CPU cooler to the top and end of. Is, 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 is this is wrong? Why are you placing thermal? paste when you have already thermal paste the processor so you're gonna see that there are four holy smokes look at this shit what the fuck is going on what the fuck is ruining right here? you know i don't have problems with temperatures everything thermal paste what the fuck this is so f hey oh my god this is so bad, man. And look, they have 2.1 million subscribers. Oh, I see. They they deactivated the the, the comments on this second. Oh, yeah, they know they made shit, but <laughs> they realize the the mistake. The mistake has been made. But yeah, this is a mess. You don't you don't make this because. What will happen is that a lot of thermal paste will go, you know, over the CPU. It's ugly. It doesn't make sense. Uh, generally, thermal paste doesn't, you know, doesn't break thing because it's not conducted. But it's, it is, it isn't. This is bad. This is bad. Anything else to say about it? Or brackets, or rather, like screws in here with brackets and holders right here. Another thing. It didn't explain. It is really important. It's using, uh, you know, this is a pretty decent case that you can, you know, easily mount anything from the back. And, but I will probably need to check that out because I don't know how well you can mount stuff from the back. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. So right here is the motherboard zone. 
and it's as I'm seeing it's not really easy to place you know you have a, sh a back shield for your motherboard so you can attach your CPU cooler to it you know the head I'll say the header of the CPU cooler whatever where you know the copper thing and that's something you have to pre-install before going to the motherboard be before placing the motherboard on, on your case some cases have the, a big hole uh, that you can easily mount uh, when you have the, your motherboard into the in the in the case, but for example, this one you can't. I believe this is a probably a um, hard drive bracket. Uh, most probably, I don't I I don't even know what what case is this. But looking at it, you probably need to mount your shield before placing the motherboard inside. So that's another thing important. It's basically, and we are something around here, I believe, uh, whatever. Kind of jumps there. Yeah, we are in the mass. And holders right so, here. So, he's speaking about this holders right here. But this, to be attached to the motherboard, you have to have a, the back shield. Uh, and it's an IEO. Every IEO comes with that. So make sure you pre install that before placing the motherboard. In, you know, it's. F mostly all the all the system complete and it didn't it didn't explain how we place this so this can happen to you you can be you know mounting everything and you forgot all the smokes how the fuck i'm gonna install the cooler if i don't have the headers placed on so it's important take notice that it isn't it didn't explain uh, anything about that but i guess it's you know it's always important anyways let's let's move on and they're going to keep the cooler raised off the processor, but it's also going to be close enough to actually physically come in contact with it, like basically keep it cool. But it placed, it placed a lot of uh, thermal paste, so it's normal that the cooling <laughs> that will be contact, you know, a lot of contact, a lot of thermal paste. What the fuck? Take thumb screws like this. Wait a minute. Why does he have... Why is the mother? Why is the RAM on this slot? Thumb screws like we this, have a full shot on this, and just thing. screw them on. So now that our internals are done, we're gonna put all the panels back on, which is the. Didn't explain, but now I'm curious to see that the. Let me just check it out. I have to check it. Because I believe he have all the RAM on the. Right side. And that doesn't really make any sense. Can we have a close look? Yes, he have. What the fuck? He have. This is something I was. I'm a little. How, how does he install this shit? So, what is the RAM thing? It's really is dope fast RAM, as you LEDs, said. and we do like lights in our gaming desktops. Secondly, Important. Aligning the stick with the middle of the strip, not with Where is he at the end, it? and just he's, play he's placing it on the first one, and here on this holy, this this is why this is really really stupid. And now I get why this getting that uh, YouTube recommend YouTube YouTube send me on a mission. <laughs> holy crap! I wanna. Clear shot of the okay, clear shot. So he's installing on the first one, so it's probably that he's gonna install on the second one. So I believe dual channel, uh, uh, if I'm not mistaken. Anyways, he's installing on the uh, on the. I don't care why is why he change it. It's hmm. that's curious to see. And then everything is on the right. So is installing on the left and on this frame. And we are speaking about you know 142. You know a minute a minute later is is have everything on the right side. What the fuck? This is this you know he said some stuff right. I have to say, but what he said. And we are, yeah, until he closing oh, all the days, whatever. All this fun stuff is happening. Another thing, as you guys see, 
why let me see if we have a, a close call on it yeah why is the the power supply with the fan on the inside when in this case fully supports you know, ventilation from the side it's stupid whatever as i was saying he said some stuff right no problem with that um but in general terms so we don't have any about specific things and specific changes you know uh, or some point keys like you know like the shield on the on the on the water cooling system it's in my opinion it's kind of important because you know you are you are all hyped up to mount a computer a setup and you go all in you place your motherboard you place your cpu you place your ram you start connecting cables you place your power supply all that stuff and then you remember holy smokes how the fuck i'm gonna connect the water cooling system or the all-in-one system because it's mostly the latest the the, the you know the last part going in uh, yeah it's it's a bit odd anyways let's move. so we fully built the pc that's what i'm saying that this is what triggered me out uh yesterday i saw an image of this stuff and i was like every someone made a mess okay not everyone knows how to build a computer that's okay but then in realizing how crazy this is and looking how you know 2.1 millions this is a series from youtube i believe because you know whatever um i i, I think it is uh, or uh, uh, sponsored by youtube probably or cool partner you know they have some uh, sponsorship going on on this stuff and what is this shit this is this is this doesn't make sense and it looks really awful uh, a case like this you guys saw it um, you know if you go back and we have to go back because this is just stupid you know the short circuit as we saw it's really an important part you know the case have a lot of space for cables and this is indeed a, a quite interesting case because it has a lot of uh, cable measurement but going back to whatever what it is something like here I believe Out to the post screen so what's next is put together happening so we fully so built going back going uh, to this uh, frame we can see that why does he have a lot of cables what the fuck is what cable is this is this the power cable what is this the power cable from the motherboard whatever the case have a lot of space as you guys can see it's a corsair one so uh, uh, rather uh, the brand normally every case or most of the cases have good space for cables nowadays but why this is just a mess he wanted to see his lighting with it lights ram lights whatever and is placing everything in front of the, of the ram a lot of mess this is bad because the airflow will get influence i mean it's i saw this image and this triggered me out a lot i got the triggered. pc oh, everything's put together and we got to the post screen. So what's next? Well, you need a USB flash drive with your Windows installation media on it. And of course, a license key. So I plugged that up, installed Windows in a couple of minutes, installed a bunch of drivers, and now we have a fully functioning gaming PC ready to run some games. Right now I've got Armor 3 running, running at maximum settings, native resolution, which is 1080p HD. And it's running pretty smoothly, like, um, I'm averaging 70 and 80 FPS, and this is normally like a very intensive game to run, and it's still doing a pretty good job. So right now I'm playing League of Legends. It's one of my favorite games. I'm actually playing against a bot, and I'm distracted, so I'm not actually doing so well. But um, otherwise, like this is pretty much what you would see me do on a gaming computer. Test stuff out, and hopefully have really high frame rates like I am right now. I'm averaging 120 FPS, and that's only because I've actually locked the game to that frame rate because I can get around 300 FPS playing League on maximum settings, which is a little bit absurd, 
and you don't really need that, so I locked it. Building a gaming desktop has been a great experience. Stop on that. Frame rate is important. The more, the best. PC Master Race, it's all important. Anyways, League of Legends, uh, it's not an FPS game, so it's kind of, yeah, I'll say, not a big deal. But if you have a 140 hertz, a 44 hertz monitor, it's all important to unlock your uh, frame rate so you can have the maximum, um, you know, frame rate possible when, while playing any game, whatever. It makes everything more fluid. I'm able to max out a lot of my favorite titles and I'll be able to play a lot of upcoming titles like Battlefield 5 and Cyberpunk 2077 without worrying too much about the parts I have. When ray tracing GPUs come out, for example, I'll be able to upgrade without having to buy a completely new system and if I have a problem down the line, I can always just swap out a part and have it serviced rather than losing my whole computer. And of course now we also have a computer to test and benchmark games here at The Verge. So what do you have to say? What I have to say about this? Um, as I said, he said some stuff right, but I mean stuff that everyone knows. Even someone that are not comfortable comfortable to build a computer, everyone knows uh, general terms about PCs. Only if you don't really care nothing about it. But if you have a PC, a uh, computer, whatever you know some stuff about it. It's, it's general, uh, common, um, you know, stuff that everyone knows. But the thing is, it made a lot of mistakes. It is, it starts to place, you know, starting with the, with the motherboard, in my opinion, uh, I, I'm not, I'm not uh, even uh, speaking about the parts because, you know, he, he spent $200. Uh, I am living in Europe, so Portugal, so the prices can be a little different. I am not complaining about the, the, the specs here, but the way he mounted everything, it's a bit odd because it started in a one, one way, uh, a minute later, the next frame, it has um, in a different position, you know, like the Rams, it's just stupid why he did that, uh, since he, he made the correct decision on the first time. Uh, I'm curious to see if they still are in the same Every place, but I can't, maybe this frame. I don't know. They seem they seem to be closer to the CPU probably. Uh, we have a lot of space here, so I don't know. But yeah, basically, is he, he, he made some calls that you know general uh, common sense. I'll say uh, he made some uh, he made a lot of mistakes, uh, starting with a short circuit on the power supply. That's freaking stupid. You are speaking about this pads. Look at this pads. They avoid short circuit in your with your power supply to the rest of components, but then is attaching the um, the power supply to the case, so it doesn't really make sense. It, it doesn't make sense, uh, anyways, uh, at the start. But <laughs> you know, this type of thing, frame by frame, you know, or minute by minute, you see different things happening and kind of going uh, against what he's saying. So it's really stupid. Uh, if I have to give you advice, you have a much more um, YouTubers out there, uh, even better than me, of course, doing this every day, and they are always making tutorials about that. It's it's not hard to to connect to, to mount a, a, a setup to mount a computer. It's not difficult. You just have to pay attention attention to the details, and with with more time doing it, you'll probably perfect yourself. But right now with this video this is not you know this this is a completely mess okay completely mess from the beginning f to the to the to the final part anyways i just wanted to give you my opinion about this stuff because as i said yesterday i saw this i saw you know an image the thumbnail you guys saw on the on the live stream i was like okay someone make a mistake then youtube is recommending me recommending me this video and I was like I saw this on Facebook and now I felt like I had to make you know I felt like YouTube it just gave me a message a mission go and react to this stuff <laughs> whatever uh, hopefully I can I can bring you more videos uh, like this I don't know maybe I don't know if you guys liked it 
just hit the like button if you like guys subscribe if you you know consider maybe consider to subscribe whatever help me let's reach 1k uh and yeah that's it i'm thinking about making a i'm thinking about making a video about, about my desk about the performance of my desk and this kind of tricked me out because this is about performance this is about building a, a, a freaking pc and I believe this, I have to check um, PC Master Race because this, this, this is definitely there, <laughs> uh, I, I bet. This is just so cringe, man, this is really cringe because, I mean, as a big channel like this, they should add, you know, they should, this guy could be building the computer, no problem with him, but he should be doing this with some background help. So everything that he does is, um, you know, the correct form, the correct way to do it without a misunderstanding people, uh, folks that are, you know, sometimes one person can be following these guys and can, and can, you know, don't following the other one. So that's what I'm trying to say, whatever. So that's why I'm saying this. It's important to pass the message. Uh, this is not what, how you build a computer. So... Yeah, basically that's it. Hope you guys like it. Once again, hit the like button if you like the video. Maybe consider subscribe. Follow me on Facebook. Follow me on Instagram. You know, check out my videos from the desk. Uh, and, you know, all the building videos. Maybe gather some ideas for your own setup, whatever. Taking the man here. Guys, see you on the next one.